In this video, we're going to be looking at finding the surface area of prisms using the lateral area. We're going to explain what lateral area is and how to find it. But before we do that, you need to understand something first. On prisms, you always have two bases which are parallel to each other, and then the distance between those bases is referred to as the height of the prism. So on this trapezoidal prism, I have two trapezoids as my bases, and the distance between them is the height of the prism. It's not always the top and the bottom. Here I have bases as pentagons, and the distance between those bases is the height of the prism. Or on this triangular prism, I have two triangles as my bases, and then the distance between those triangles is the height of that prism. Lateral area is a method we can use to help us find surface area. Now, we'll help explain it by looking at a net of this prism. This is a rectangular prism. And its net is made up of the two bases and then the four lateral rectangles. Now, those four lateral rectangles combined can be one giant rectangle and we can find this area and we refer to it as the lateral area. Now, because the individual rectangles of the length and the width of the base, it's actually the perimeter of the base would be the length of that entire rectangle. And then the height of the prism, which we just talked about, is the width of that rectangle. Take a look at this trapezoidal prism here. Let's give it some dimensions around its base so we can calculate its perimeter. And then we'll also give the prism a height. We'll say the height is eight centimeters. Now, typically when you're finding surface area of a prism like this, you'll calculate the area of the trapezoids and then you'll individually calculate each rectangular side until you can add them all together to get surface area. What the lateral area method attempts to do is to calculate the area of those individual rectangles as one giant rectangle. And it can be a major time saver when you're calculating surface area. Now normally we won't do this with the net, we'll do it just by looking at the picture, but I'm going to use the net to show you why this works. So again, that middle lateral rectangle, all those rectangular faces has two dimensions. One of them is the perimeter of one of the trapezoids, the perimeter of the base, six, seven, five, and 10. If I add all of those together, I will get 28 centimeters. Now the other dimension is eight centimeters. So if I multiply eight times 28, just like a one rectangle, I will get 224 square centimeters, which is the lateral area, all of those spaces combined. Now to find the total surface area, you would still have to add in the area of those two bases, right? So I'd still need the trapezoid area, which in this case I just said was 34. You'd still have to calculate it. If you double it, you'd get 68, and then you could add it to find the total surface area. Now this method is extremely useful if you can start to think about prisms in terms of the perimeter of the base times the height will equal all of their lateral faces. It can allow you to find the surface area of more complex prisms in a much faster way. So remember, to find the lateral area, you would multiply the perimeter of one of the bases times the height of that prism. 